Hello and welcome back to Tyranny. So we leveled up. Um, let's see, what can I give you? Ability and yeah, definitely speed. And let's see. Kito has a bow attack stance target for longer. I don't really need that. Uh, uh, increases damage with magic staves and allows basic dice to strike multiple. I'm not using, using your throwing weapons. Cool. Adds unfinished magic with throwing weapons. No, I don't understand. This is looks like a like an arrow. Okay, let's see what else do we have. The party can store additional quick item slots and cancel my bosses while in combat on more of it. Okay, let's give you that for now. Not like I use them a lot. <laughs> but yeah, now I have those. I will use them eventually. I'm also, I've been also been wondering whether or not we should go around the places we visited earlier. The keep is safe in our hands. Repairs are already on the way. Great. Is that why you stopped me? I sure want to hear about what we've accomplished here. I'll hang back and oversee repairs of the defenses. Great. Once right. again, is this why you stopped me? Ah, oh, no, here. I don't know if it makes any difference. I believe it does. Mm hmm. Because this keeps. puts us. in. A particular place. Well, this one should bring us into. world map. Also, don't worry, kills in shadow, I won't let anyone that mouth you. Right. What do you mean you need to My whole party is here. And I think he was here. Not be the bridge, but the iron hearth. Much of the day is spent navigating through a dense metallic forest. The strong roots of the ancient sage would keep the tree standing after the edict of storms hit. The large boats and branches collecting whatever detritus the wind swept up. Retromanias is a bizarre dead forest with metal scrap for a canopy. Rusted weapons dangle from above, embedded in trunks and looped through branches. Fragments of armor decorate the tree limbs above you. A clinking mass of rust-colored foliage. You glance upward and catch a slight of sight of finely crafted blade, rust-free and bounced precursively upon some branches high up in the tree. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's try climbing the tree. The first branches are more than 20 feet up, requiring a slow, ponderous shimmy up the trunk until you're able to reach up to grab hold of an embedded spear, one that supports your weight. You pull yourself higher and make a daring leap to the branches above. As your right hand makes contact, you hear the snapping of brittle wood, but only from one of the branches in your grasp. You dangle for a moment before grabbing hold with two hands. Soon, your feet find a way to a sturdy boat and you are safe. Navigating up the rest of the tree is a much easier affair. The metal decorations make for a court movement, but you manage to st a steady p pace. Upon reaching the blade, you make a pleasant discovery. Several pieces of intact gear have been swept into the crown of the tree. You unhook and drop the items, watching them as they bounce and plummet to the ground below. A short while later, you're back upon the forest floor. 
richer for your efforts. Oh, what's that? <laughs> A thing that I should be using but will never properly use. Did you guys have any shops around here or not? Uh, we'll never find out. Okay. Let's go straight to, to Ash then. I should have one here. I think we can. Just in case we'll, there will become a day when I'll use staff instead of bow. The great keep of Sentinel Stand is ours. Oh, how I will relish tearing down every vestige of the unbroken and bearing the standard of that corrupt realm. Oh, this is a great victory for the disfavored. What's more, we are delivered from the edict of storms. My runners speak of you in glowing terms, though I instructed them specifically not to report on your deeds in too much detail. I wanted to hear it from no one but the source. I would know more about how I how it felt to stand in the center of the storms, as the overlord's magic dissolved around you. You must be wary from your travels. I am eager to hear your account, but I will understand if you still need to gather your thoughts. This is a joyous day, and I wouldn't spoil it with impatience. Let's go over it and be done. The seat of Regence and the tarnished gem of Stalwart. I have anticipated this, so tell me, what do you have to report? Shredo's Herodin is dead. That is gratifying to hear the cowards spent too long crouched behind the walls of Sentinel Stand and deserve none of Caros' mercy. The Regent family was an inbred and corrupt line of failed rulers. They had neither the courage nor the gift to lead their realm to prosperity, as they demonstrated. Stalwart is much improved by their absence. The Edict of Storms is ended. Why? I don't understand this. And I have breathed fresh air for the first time since I returned to Iron Hearth. You managed to accomplish what my forces could not. More importantly, you have abated Kairos anger for the time being. With the great stalemate of the conquest ended, surely we have earned the favor of Tunan and Kairos alike. Every deed you accomplish in the name of this favor proves a right to rule these lands. Ash balls a first fist and enthusiastically pumps it in the air. How did it feel, Fatebinder? I have not had the distinction of breaking an edict much less several. It feels less like breaking a spell and more like absorbing it. A strange distinction. I would offer you some comforting assurance that this will pass, but that would be an empty promise. Your actions at Vengeance Well have caused us all to expect more than you were ever prepared to shoulder as a legal, legal clerk. Living up to our admittedly high expectations will do more than merely get you through this war. There are greater things to come once it settles. So, what are our next steps? Is there nothing else you wish to discuss? Nothing about my daughter? Ash Faros Brown looks at you with some unspoken emotion. Not this time, Arkan. He presses his lips into a tight line and his laugh is high. First things first, my soldiers reported on your activities in the Blade Grave. They saw what happened when you broke the Edict of Storms. The power of this edict flowed through you like the wind. No one could account for it, but I have my suspicions. You are becoming powerful. Perhaps in ways I don't even understand. Something has responded to my activities. That much is clear. An understatement, but I won't hold you accountable for your ignorance in this matter. 
This is neutral return for us all, so it seems prudent to exercise caution. These are tools beyond the ken of for people of Archons alike. Take care that you don't overstep your bounds. In Karos's hierarchy, someone always notices. With that out of the way, let's return to the matter of the war. Our position in the tears is strengthening by the day, but there is work still to be done. It's time to broaden our scope in this war. There are two regions of interest, and either of them would strengthen our hold on the realm. Lithian's Crossing is home to merchants and, and the skilled forward-bound artisans. The Burning Library was the home of the all-knowing sages before Kairos reduced it to cinders. I will head to the Burning Library. Good. I understand that the voice of Nerat has dispatched one of his miscreant gangs to come through the ruins of the library. We cannot allow any privileged knowledge to fall into their heads. Kill any of his red clad degenerates you find, and destroy the library as Kairos intended. There is also said to be a repository of arcane lore in the bowels of the library, the Silent Archive. It must be eliminated to satisfy the term of Kairos' will. My scoutmaster, Marik, who was dispatched to observe the Scarlet Course, though I haven't heard from him in some time. His last known location was the village of Effigy. The wilderness around the library is plagued with coarse patrols and wild wildfires that can make crowds treacherous at a moment's notice. Marik should be able to assist you in charting a safe course through that wasteland. The general worries his beard and frowns. I instructed Marik to destroy all forbidden lore within the burning library, given the first available opportunity. The fact that the Edict of Fire persists is cause to assume that he failed. Farewell. I don't want to talk with him about Amelia. Because for sure I can make it worse for her. <laughs> and... <laughs> What can I tell you? I packed up everyone's uh, lives already. And what I learned in this game is that some matters I are best left unspoken. Maybe we should have gone to Lithian's Crossing. Why? Um, because we have two spires here. Or is the wrong thing I was thinking about? No. Yeah, I think this one. In the middle. Oh well. But we have a missile. Dearest Fatebinder, champion of Tunus Grey Gavel, slayer of Quarmen. Uh, we hope you recognize that we bear no ill will. Who understands treachery if not the Archon of Secrets? We've always held the very highest esteem for the work of other specialists in the arts duplicious. Make no mistake, dear Freightbinder, after your little performance on the Vengeance Well, and with such a flair for theatrical illumination, you have ascended in our estimate. We trust you will understand that when we peel the flesh from your bones and squeeze the bile from a quiver innards, it's strictly for out of artistic integrity and the courtesy ought a fellow professional. Nothing personal at all. But enough about our friendly live uh, rivalry. If you enjoy, do you enjoy the company of our little spy? Her dance never fails to inspire in in us the most pleasant quivers. We have a gift for her, <coughs> delivered through you due to the girl's questionable faculty with letters. We've learned from one of our birds that the mercenary in Haven has been absolutely gloating about slaying her sisters. His boasts ever sec even secured him more defending some crossing merchant. Show her the sigils on the reverse. She know what they mean. The voices of Narat, Archon of Secret and Master of Cacophony. The opposite page contains several rough ink scratch symbols that look like nothing more than a child's pictographs of their favorite animals. I 
Arcan of Secrets, receiving your message was an unexpected pleasure. I shall see to it that Varys is informed. Doubtless, this will end in blood. Fatebinder, I have now. But I cannot really come back to the... Uh, ooh, um, to the spire right now. Not this one. Opening one of the sacks releases a horrific stench into the air. Peering into it, you can see what remains of rotting fruits and grains. Okay, you're not enemies, I'm glad about that. Another one? Fatebinder, you have proven your cleverness in the face of an apparently impossible choice. Would I have been so wise in the same situation? I cannot say. I know only that I do not envy your mission. I must urge caution, however. Some who watch your actions may be more alarmed than amused. Will they be able to convince themselves that the Overlord crafted the Edict of Storms with this loophole in mind? Or will they see in your choice an alternative that cannot be set to parchment? I hope you soon make an effort to join us at court in the bastard city. I often feel that it has been too long since we last whispered of the darker corners of Tartus. You've experienced so many of them as of late. Perhaps I can provide illumination. Kalio. Dear Fatebinder Evna, your actions at Sentinel Stand will have once again supplied the rumormongers of the bastard city with stories to peddle. Some seem to think that your cunning twist of legally is intended to display some great support for the people of Star Wars. That, of course, only leads to speculation about which people of Star Wars you intended to benefit. The unbelievable. The unbridled upstarts or the corrupt old queens. Others foolishly believe that you unraveled the Overlord's edict to prove that you could, as if a sil sliver of cleverness could bring Harrow's woe. As a scholar, I prefer primarily sources to gossip, so allow me to ask you plainly, why did you choose to spare the child? It was the right thing to do. When faced with the choice to save a child or consign it to death, I chose to save it. That does not seem to s so strange a thing to me. Either decision would have fulfilled the Overlord's will. The last ruling house of Star Wars met its end in a blade grey. You need to read nothing more into it than that. Let's see what Polly call. Mm, no. Okay, I cannot answer that one. But we will visit Tunon after this place. You notice a young woman standing apart from the rest of the sages. She fidgets and witches, hopping back and forth from foot to foot, murmuring to herself. Even though she seems energetic, her eyes are tired and rheumy, with dark circles underneath them. She leans against the wall, bouncing up and down on the balls of her feet. Looking up midwitch, she catches your eye and calls out to you. You there! Yes, you, you can help me out. I have so much that needs to... Oh, wait, I thought you were someone else, and this is incredibly embarrassing, so never mind, because you're not who I thought you were, and so you can help me. And it would be a waste for me to ask you everything, only to find out you can't help me, because I know you can't help me, because you're not the person I was looking for, so thanks for listening, but I need to keep doing my research, so now I'll go over here. <laughs> she bounces and twitches a fee few feet away, and leans against the wall again, muttering to herself. As you approach, you see a stern-faced woman having a heated discussion with a frightened young man. She holds a piece of paper in her hand and punctuates every few words with a pointed tap on the sheet. The young man turns bright red and takes two shuffling steps backward his eyes casting about to he for help from the group, but no one gathered will meet his gaze. Finally, the woman throws the paper at him and says dismissively, We are done here.
The young man makes a couple of frantic grabs at the paper before finally securing it, then turns and runs away, tripping as he goes. The woman squeezes her clo her, her eyes closed, sighs and puts the palm of her hand against her forehead, working it around in small circles. She takes another deep breath and then turns to face you. She gives you a half bow with her face stoic and her voice flat. Fatebinder. The last thing I expected to hear was a representative of the disfavored. I, my name is Renata. We are not properly prepared to receive you as we have recently taken a prisoner and he has proven to be quite a handful. She puts her hand to her head again, as if to emphasize her consternation. And I have a feeling you're probably here to speak of just such matters. Renata pauses for a moment. Although I have n a matter I would like to address, when the Vellum Citadel was under siege, why did you feel it necessary to muzzle my fellow sages? If they escaped, what was so wrong with that? Kairos had issue with me my, with the knowledge we had stored. Why punish its caretakers? Especially since they were already in fear for their lives. She puts up her hand and shakes her head. Never mind. Don't. I am sure I want to hear the answer. I have good, I have enough problems on my hands right now. Renata looks to where the young sage disappeared behind the building. We are... She pauses and looks up thoughtfully. How do I say this diplomatically? We are rather short staff at the moment and certain uh, aspects of my day-to-day -day life are more difficult than I would hope. She glances at you, a look of distaste clouding her face. Because we didn't have quite enough time to evacuate before our home was destroyed. We lost many good men, she smiles stiffly. But that's all in the past, isn't it? What business do you have with the sages? I've come in search of someone named Marek. I have learned that he may be here. Renata smiles and points south toward a house with a sage and beastman standing in front of it. He is here all right. He was our captive and he isn't going anywhere. I would like to talk to your prisoner. Renata folds her arms and looks at you incredulously. Well, considering he was probably sent to finish the job the edict started, which would mean you're probably here to check up on him, why ever would I let you do that? I just want to see him briefly. He might be more inclined to talk to me. Absolutely not. The last thing I need is you to cladding, uh, cladding against me. Now I'm incredibly busy and have to work to and have work to do. So leave me be. We are not criminals, Sage. Whatever else you might think, we are the ones in the right here, and you are simply an obstruction to be moved aside by force, if need be. She scrutinized Baruch with a mixed expression. Easy for you to say when you stand as tall as the library stacks. Come down to my level if you want to pick a fight, you great iron spire. Ash, uh, Ash has commanded me to speak with Marek. You are standing in the way of Kairos' forces. And I have a scattered group to collect and lead. Everyone has hardships and I really don't care if you uh, don't care to hear about yours. Kairos has done enough damage. I will not allow it to continue while I am here. You can bluster all you want. You will not be speaking to the prisoner. I won't ask you again, Renata. Let me talk to Marik or pay the price. Renata's eyes narrow. It appears you wish this to end in blood. So be it. You will find the sage learns so easily sensed. Guards, we are under attack. Another. Okay, we. Uh, that won't really work. Okay. Come here. Sorry, I can't. That thing move your butt. You use that, great. Oh. 
I know. Waiting for clear path? What? Okay, that was so weird. Why are you not doing that? Which I asked you to do. We really start getting a lot of things that are yellow. Um, I think I'll give it to you. Yeah, it's better. And it fits you. This door won't move an inch. It must be barricaded from the other side. Okay, and I think I'll end this part here. We found Mari, by the way. So, for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.